is no less than a radical departure in tennis scoring, an entire tournament of just tiebreakers, but there are some very exciting aspects about it. That's right. It's certainly fun to think that in the next two hours, we're going to see eight players on the court, several of the game's best personalities, McEnroe, Agassi, Noah, not to mention Lendl and Edberg. And usually in tennis, of course, on a Sunday, you're only going to see two players out on the court. Whereas with golf, you see eight, 10, 15 players sometimes. So I think it's going to be very exciting. We're going to know a lot more about it in about two hours from now. It is going to be interesting, no doubt. One of the men who played in the first tournament that featured a tiebreaker of any kind was the man that is going to be working alongside us today, Arthur Ashe. And that was back in, let's see, just 20 years ago in Philadelphia, Arthur. You're right, Cliff. But in the late 60s, when tennis was looking to popularize itself a bit more to simplify the scoring, James Van Allen of Newport came up with his Van Allen simplified scoring system. And then in 1970, the players at Philadelphia with the organizers decided to defy the International Tennis Federation and just try it, just to see what happened. And it worked. Of course, the most famous till that time after that was the 1972 WCT finals between Rod Laver, Ken Rosewall, and Ken Rosewall won that match, fifth set, tiebreaker. Tiebreaker has certainly made a difference to the world of tennis. This is a tournament of tiebreakers alone. I know that you're going to enjoy it. The shootout from Milan coming up on ABC. The tennis shootout presented by Tots from the Forum in Milan, Italy. This place is humming. It is jammed, 14,000 people in this brand new arena, and they are excited and interested by what they just saw, which is the top eight players in the world walking onto the court. The top four seeded players in this event were asked to draw their names, or rather the names of their opponents, out of a hat. And here you see John McEnroe pulling out the name of what turned out to be Yannick Noah. So it is John McEnroe playing Yannick Noah in the first round. And Arthur, there are some other very interesting first round matches. There certainly are down at the bottom. The number two seed, Yvonne Lindell, playing Pat Cash. Lindell plays very few loose points. He's uh, always there. He's always very focused. And Cash, notoriously slow starter. A lot of loose points. I've got a favor, Lindell, in that one. Arthur, what does it take to win a tiebreaker? It takes a, a mindset of, uh, of arrogance, of uh, a court presence of uh, very positive thinking. And you've really got to keep your focus entirely on the court for as long as it takes. Well, where does that put a guy like, say, Stefan Edberg? Well, Stefan Edberg has a very aggressive style, which I think is favored in tiebreakers. Uh, my two choices here are Edberg first and then Yannick Noah, because on the other side, though you may be an underdog, for about 10 minutes, you could mm. be the best player in the world. Indeed. I think I may go with Andre Agassi because here's a guy who only knows one style of tennis. You know, he's not out there wondering what to do. He only does one thing, and that's beat the heck out of the ball. Well, as you can hear, the crowd here are just wild with anticipation of this first shootout from Milan. And we'll be back with the first...